What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today I'm going to be talking Samsung keyboard and seven things that you really need to know about using the Samsung keyboard on your Galaxy S23 Ultra. Before we do, I want to uh, quickly take a look because people are always interested in the case that I'm using on my device. People are always asking in the comments. This is the UAG Monarch Kevlar Pro. Uh, and then I am also using as well, which I have back here, kind of using as a stand right now. This is the Moss uh, cloth back case. It was a very nice case as well. Those are actually my two favorite cases right now for the S23 Ultra. And I will make a video on both of those coming soon. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that I did start this program. A couple people have asked about it, if it's still going on, where you can get paid to help me review some apps. You can get paid between $25 and $100 to help me review some apps for my channel. I want kind of crowdsourcing people's opinions. All you got to do is sign up at the link in my website, which will be in the description in the pinned comment. You do have to be in the U.S. for these right now because of payment reasons. I may expand it to international in the future. But if you're interested in making some money to help me review some apps, check out the link below. So let's go ahead and get into these keyboard tips. The first thing you need to know, which I think is crazy how many people don't know this, if you go into the settings, my wife actually uses a Samsung phone. I often help her set her stuff up. She actually didn't know that you could do this, and it's a very useful option. You can go into the keyboard settings, which is in general management, and then go down to where it says Samsung keyboard settings, and you can actually resize your keyboard and change the transparency. It's right here. So I have a pretty large size here. Uh, you can actually see, you can use this to drag and drop it. I kind of have mine somewhere in the middle between the default size and the larger size, but you can actually go all the way down there and then all the way up here. I like to keep mine somewhere, maybe like closer to the larger size, but uh, not all the way to the very top. It really is up to you. You have to play with it, kind of see what works for you in a personal way. Uh, and then of course, transparency settings are available within the floating keyboard. So you can also change those. You can also drag the handles in if you want to make the keys you know, wider or more narrow all at once. This is something you can do as a preliminary step that's in the regular settings to customize your size and transparency. Now, once you're happy with that, you can also customize the layout and font size custom symbols from within the Samsung standard settings menu. However, for the layout, there really isn't that much customization available. It's just a very little bit of customization. Uh, so what I highly recommend for the rest of your customization for the layout on your keyboard is that you download the Keys Cafe app, which is inside Goodlock. You can get Keys Cafe by going to the Galaxy Store. Just open up your Galaxy Store. I hate the ads in the Galaxy Store. I wish Samsung would get rid of those. Type in Keys Cafe, and it's going to be the first search result that you get. It's right there, Keys Cafe. Download that. It's a Goodlock module. And once you get it, you can go ahead and open that up. And then you have a lot of additional customization options at your disposal. So first of all, you can go up here to make your own keyboard and design your own keyboard layout. And in addition, there's a whole bunch of other keyboard layouts for chemistry, math, math plus chemistry, and some other standard keyboard layouts to choose from. I have one here that I designed myself. Once you tap on a layout or choose a new one, you can edit the layout and you can add different symbols to your keyboards and delete them. Now, the really, really cool thing about this is not only can you add additional rows of keys, which is what this button right here does. It adds additional key rows, um, and you can undo that if you don't want it. Um, you can hold down on a key like the H key, and you can actually change the width and the height and also the alternate symbol that's going to be used for the H key if you turn the alternate symbols on. Now, I don't know why anyone would want to change the width or the height of a specific letter key. However, some people really like to have a wider period down here. So like if you want to change the width of the period symbol, you could do that down there. Um, so it's very simple to change the width of any symbols that you're interested in, completely customize your layout here at the top. Now, once you customize your layout, you can also actually share that with other people here, export that to share it with someone else if they want to use it. Sometimes I tweak one for my wife and then export it so she can just install it. She doesn't have to play with it herself. Then you can style your keyboard. You guys have probably noticed in my videos, I have a unique coloring for my keyboard. I have a custom layout called Lime, which I chose the colors on myself. Um, and all you gotta do is tap on it to apply it. You guys can actually see it. Let me go back into something like Twitter. 
There's my custom layout right there. Uh, and if you go back, you can choose to add your own keyboard customization and you'll be able to customize your keyboard fully. You can actually see the keyboard there by pressing the button there as well. Down here though, you've got a bunch of recommendations for different keyboard layouts that they think you might want to use, but you don't have to use the recommendation. You can easily tap that plus button and create your own keyboard fully right there. And you guys can see what it looks like. You've got all these different things. These little circles here represent different things that you can customize based on your preferences. Okay, so once you've done that within Keys Cafe, you're gonna have yourself a nice custom theme, but also inside Style Your Own Keyboard, you can change the sound and effects that you use as well. So if you go to effects, you guys can see the different effects that are going to resonate when you tap on the keys. If you go up here, you can see the effects that I have turned on, pretty cool effects. Uh, you can also change the colors of how those effects look as well with the color wheel at the top. You can change the key color effect, the keyboard color effect, and the key motion effect. They can all be different to add something truly unique to your particular keyboard. And then of course over here, you can also change the sounds. Um, these could also be changed to customized sounds if you upload some from somewhere like your Google Drive, change those sounds in a custom way. Okay, so those are probably the bulk of it was the keyboard customization. Now let's talk about some other tips for actually using the keyboard on a daily basis. One that I think a lot of people aren't aware of is if you use the Samsung keyboard, one thing you can do for navigating text, let me just open a tweet and say, this is a tweet. You can long press on the keyboard to navigate through text. And then if you want to highlight something, you can take your other finger and this, you have to be very careful and just swipe it and then it'll highlight that word. So you can see here, I can highlight the A for instance. It is a little finicky, but the long press to seek actually works really well. The highlighting part, I don't use quite as much because you do have to be kind of quick about it and then it'll give you the options to copy paste, etc. But people don't know this tip in bulk and it's really something that kind of changes the way I use the keyboard because I'm always needing to seek through and edit things when I'm typing tweets, emails, etc. That really gives you great control over your keyboard. It's a very simple one, but very effective. The next one is to use third party content. So when you go back into the standard Samsung keyboard settings, go into general management, go back into Samsung keyboard settings. If you scroll to the bottom, there is third party content you can use with the keyboard. Now there's a total of six options here. These will unlock additional emojis for you um, from Giphy as well. Spotify integrates some music uh, with your keyboard and Google will allow you to do translation and search YouTube directly. And of course, Grammarly, you all know about that to kind of proofread things if you're writing a professional email. So when you're actually accessing the keyboard, all of that stuff is accessed right here from within the keyboard menu shortcuts which is actually my other tip. Once you enable third-party content, make sure you know how to use this. Now, again, you can use the translate feature to translate from English to some other language. We could do, for instance, English to German. We could say, hello, and then it will go ahead and hit enter. It'll translate that to German. You can see it says hello right there in my tweet. So that translation feature is incredibly useful. That's from the shortcuts menu. Uh, and then you can also access other shortcuts from within the shortcuts menu, like the extract text option, which will extract text from images directly in here. Um, you can actually just choose this option. It'll allow you to point your camera to anything and extract text, and then we'll put it right inside of your tweet or your message or whatever it is that you're composing. Uh, Grammarly is in there as well. YouTube directly, like I said, emojis, Keyboard size, you can actually do the resizing that I showed you early directly from there. GIFs or GIFs if you prefer. Theming, but this is not the Keys Cafe theming that I showed you before. Um, this is actually the more basic theming. Doesn't give you all the options that Keys Cafe has that we looked at earlier. Uh, and then text editing, which will basically let you do an expanded version of the clipboard. You can play around with text and do some more advanced editing of that text. So all of those menu options are directly from within here and there's a lot of useful ones that you'll wanna take advantage of. Handwriting is also an option from when in here, if you want to use your S Pen to actually write and then directly translate that to typing, I'll show you guys how you can also do some cool stuff with that in just a second. 
So the next one is emoji pairs. Let's talk emoji. Samsung has a new option called emoji pairs, where basically it's an expansion of Google's emoji kitchen for Android, where you can create a mashup of two emoji. So if you go in here to create, there's some predefined ones, but you can choose like this one and that one. You can choose those two, and then you can say animate, and it will create this pretty cool emoji pair right there that you can share. And if you don't like that one, there's a whole bunch of different ones. There's like ones where you've got a whole bunch of them coming down. You can tap done, and then they'll go ahead and insert that right there as a GIF into my tweet. Very cool, very nice to see Samsung bringing those type of emoji features to the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Samsung keyboard. So the last one, which was the one I was just talking about, but I wanna go for it a little more in depth, is S Pen uh, to text. And so you have to turn this option on inside the settings. So if you go up here into settings, once again, go to general management, Samsung keyboard settings. At the bottom, you'll see S Pen to text right here. This does need to be enabled. I believe it is enabled by default, but this allows you to basically use the S Pen in any search field, not just uh, inside the keyboard when you're typing on the keyboard in other apps. You can actually just tap your S Pen in the search field and write, it'll translate the text automatically. Now you can use editing commands like slashing through to delete something as well when you're doing the handwriting. So if I go into Google and I go up here to search, I could type something like, you know, I could go to write directly on here. I don't even have to write on the keyboard down there. I could say droid life, and then I could search for that. And I find droid life right there. Now, the other thing I really like to use this for, but it's actually not as good as it used to be, is I like to use this for, let's actually, let's try writing it here, Wolfram Alpha. And if you go to Wolfram Alpha, you can actually write mathematical formulae in here and it will try to translate it to math type. So X plus five equals seven, but you see it didn't really do a perfect job. I'll try one more time. X plus five equals seven. Yeah, so it's not as good as it used to be. Samsung used to be great at translating the graph formulas. Not as great as it used to be, but it's still something that you can definitely use um, if you actually have more precise handwriting than I do. My handwriting is not that great. But this is a great feature to be able to use your S Pen to convert to text. You can also use it on the Samsung calendar to do some markup for events and things like that. And I'm actually gonna make a separate video on the Samsung calendar. So I'll talk about that in that video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. If you have more questions about the Samsung keyboard, drop them below. I'll probably also make a video on Gboard and how to use Gboard a little more in depth as well. Don't forget about the paid apps opportunity. If you're in the US, you wanna sign up, I'll drop that below as uh, well as these two cases as well, if you wanna check those out. Appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.